Hi, this is Phil Spencer, and you're listening to the Inner Circle Podcast. For the fans, by the fans. Thank you for landing on Planet Xbox. You are now rocking with the Inner Circle, the official podcast of ICXM.net. And this is your podcast for fans, by fans. So salute to you, the Mighty Mighty X units. I'm your host, KORX Kellel. And with B Money and Unified, together, we are the Inner Circle. Today will be no news, no news intro on today's podcast. Because today is all about GDC and all the news is in the podcast. So sit back, relax, stay tuned, and Unified, take it away. It's poll time, guys. I want to give a shout out to all you fellow, fellow Inner Circle followers and listeners. We value your feedback and always thank you for taking the time to give it to us. We had one poll question this time around, so let's go over the poll results. We asked, should you be worried about seeing too many exclusives becoming cross-play titles? 62% of you said no, compared to 38% saying yes. So the overall feeling from people, are they, are, they don't seem to be too worried about it. And frankly, I'm not too worried about it right now. Uh, could be cause for concern later. We'll just have to see. One of the people left a reason as to why they said no. E-Dubs, going to give you a shout-out, man. Says he believes exclusives are just placeholders until first-party titles begin to make their way out. Also, with rising development costs, that's why you see third-party devs go after the time exclusives to get help with funding. Over to you, Wood. Yeah, man. You know, uh, GDC was amazing. And there was a lot of things that were said at GDC that either really made a lot of Xbox fans happy or made a lot of Xbox fans upset. Um, One of the things, which is one of the topics that you just spoke of, that the fans show little concern with which i think they may show more concern with now is that cross play um is going to become a very big thing for the xbox one and pc and phil spencer went ahead and, and kind of teased that there'll be more first party games going to pc because of cross play so the question is what first party games will go in my opinion i think that we're looking more at things like rts's mmos um something like fable and, and fable's always kind of been like that pc title but i think fable because it makes sense when you play the hero you can be the hero with a controller and it feels right to play that hero and design your hero because it's the rpg elements to it at the same time you have the villain where you have a top-down view which gives you a real strategy look a real strategy feel as you survey mm. the whole entire you know world the whole entire dungeon so i think that them doing that makes sense them yeah. putting halo 5 on pc does not make sense doesn't make sense at all because we all know that you couldn't do cross play with a game like that because of the simple fact that it's mouse and keyboard and we all know that there's a significant advantage of mouse and keyboard to a right. controller um and i don't think console gamers want to go out and get <laughs> a mouse and keyboard for the xbox one just to play so i don't think a game like Halo will be on there. Gears will be on there. Um, I don't think that major flagship titles will be on there. Now, it gives me a vested interest in PC games because I know how fast those things port. So, we're going to get into all that. Um, I want to get my guys' opinions on how they feel about uh, cross-play and Microsoft possibly releasing more exclusives on PC. So, let's start with you, Brandon. Man, after uh, GDC, man, I'm, I'm feeling kind of like a Nostradamus. You know, I, I kind of call, you know, a lot of stuff that was going to happen uh, kind of mid last year, early last year. Um, you know, crossplay was one of the things I called out. And as you can see, it has happened. Um, one of the things that did concern me is that there was no uh, other like third party title or, or no big title uh, with the crossplay. They could be saving we, we, that for E3, though. Yeah, they they could they could, but what what we've all learned from Microsoft is that they want to be in control of everything. So um, that's why you kind of see like the the indies go first, and uh, you know the smaller titles and things like that with crossplay. Um, so I guess we'll see, but 
I, I think I have to disagree. I think we will see like a, a Forza, uh, maybe a Horizon game go cross play on PC. Huh. Gotcha. I mean that that kind of makes sense though. I guess yeah, I might have to retract that statement because when you think about yeah. PC creativity, right? And you think about right, yeah. how you can design cars and games. Now imagine having somebody who's in that PC space that really is really into designing cars and now you can deliver that to the Xbox One. Oh yeah, man, the modding, the, the modding, modding stuff with oh, PC yeah. is a, a big advantage. Yeah, no, so. I I, I kind of agree. I can see Forza going. I'm not very happy about that. And I told Aaron Greenberg, Aaron, if you listen to the show, <laughs> you know why I'm not happy. I'm not very happy about that. Yeah, but, man, I saw that conversation. <laughs> yeah, no, but I, I, I understand what it is. You know, I understand what it is. Mike, uh, what are your thoughts? Uh, it's inevitable, man. Crossplay is coming, and it's just gonna continue to get bigger. Um, you know, it's gonna start with the indie titles, like like Brandon said. I'm just gonna pretty much echo that. I mean, you're gonna see, uh, you know, uh, the thing with Fable, like you were talking about Fable Legends. I think a game like that actually makes sense because you can like get on your phone and do the strategy part as the villain, you know, with a top down view. I mean, that, that, some games are gonna make sense, man. And going back to what you said though, Halo. Gears of War games like that are not going to make any sense, I don't think, because I think you're going to be having you're going to be at a disadvantage, you know, with the PC player versus the console player because of the mouse and the keyboard, like you said. So, and I think that's gonna you're gonna have a lot of pissed off people, or probably on Xbox Live on their on their Xbox Ones versus the PC guys because you know they got they got trolled or something. But you know, I don't know. I mean, it, I, I don't think you're gonna see. I think it's gonna be a pick and choose kind of thing. I think they're going to use their their common sense when it comes to you know deciding what games are going to get PC ports and and uh, cross play functionality. So yeah, I I I still just feel like I I kind of feel like every every console gamer or everybody who said okay I have a PC I'm going to go out and buy an Xbox One because I won't be able to play you know X game on PC. And now you turn around and you're telling me that there's a possibility that X game may come to PC after I went out and bought an Xbox One. Now, I want people to understand something, okay? If, if PC gamers get some exclusives, right? And a lot of people are concerned, like, well, what do I need an Xbox for? Understand something. You are a hardcore gamer, okay? The majority of people who buy get consoles and, and buy these games are casual people. And the the hardcore install base is big, but it's not as big as you think. Um, and that's clearly shown by both install bases between PS3 and, X, and Xbox 360, as well as the Wii U, which is, you know, a, 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 a casual dream console, or at least it was when it first released. So you're going to have people out there that aren't into hardcore gaming, meaning that they're not into PC gaming. They're not going to go out and spend the money on, you know, modding or building a new PC with a new graphics card and getting everything the way it's supposed to be a new screen and just hooking up to the point that, you know, you have a beast of a machine or you have a machine that's just as good as an Xbox. When you can get all of that in a box at a reasonable price nowadays for $350. So, you know, I, I just don't see that being that detrimental now what hurts is the pc fans who were going to get an xbox whether that is five percent ten percent fifteen percent whatever the percentage is people out there who were possibly thinking of getting a xbox one console may now have second thoughts because they feel that well those first party exclusives were going to come to uh you know pc anyway so why do I have to go out and get an Xbox One? And I don't know if it hurts Microsoft in the console race because it does. But the reality of it is, is what a lot of people don't realize is that games is really where the money's at. It's not the consoles. On average, when the, when the Xbox One came out at, at 500 bucks, Microsoft was making, making about, what, $21, $27 per console? Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, they weren't making much. They weren't making much, right? But if you then turn around and you sell some of those first-party games on PC, and then you sell some of those first-party games to consoles, that's almost fifty-five dollars a pop. 
Um, and that's really what the average is, you know, being that I used to work at GameStop, I kind of know that the company's um, GameStop doesn't really make a lot of money on those on those first party games why they sell used titles, but they do get, you know, <laughs> two bucks or three bucks or whatever out of that. So, yeah, about fifty five to fifty seven dollars Microsoft is going to get per game. That's a significant increase, a significant yeah. <laughs> increase in money. You know, I, I just look at it from the perspective of that, you know, you have to really think in microsoft's position from a business perspective right that yeah. it's about how do they sustain their business um they're trying to make a comeback in the u.s they're trying to make a comeback in the uk but worldwide they aren't like but there's a lot of pc gamers worldwide you could appeal to those gamers through pc now understand i really am not trying to defend what they're doing i'm really not i don't like it at all but i'm trying to I'm trying to look at it from the perspective as a business person um, through Microsoft's eyes and what they can do in their ecosystem. And I think one benefit of that for Xbox is that even though we may lose install base, we're going to get a hell of a ton of PC games coming to Xbox One. And it's already showing. Yeah. It's already showing with games like Elite Dangerous and Gigantic. So, um, you know, I, you know, it, it has to play out. We'll see what happens in the future. We're definitely going to try to reach out to guys, you know, Phil Spencer, Ken Lobb. Uh, we'll, we'll try to get those guys back on the show sooner rather than later and, and try to get some questions asked and answered. Um, but, you know, what's what's a really cool thing is that indie games now will be cross-play, um, starting with um, some of the titles that they've shown that will be hitting PC, like Shovel Knight um, and a few other really, really awesome games. Um Mike, what is your thoughts on the new indie movement? There was a, a ton of awesome looking indie games at GDC. What are your thoughts on that in cosplay? Uh, you know, I kind of already mentioned a little bit about the, about the earlier topic, but um, I think Shovel Knight, we know Battletoads, going to have Battletoads in there. I guess we need to mention that. Uh, I guess it's playable fighters in the game. Um, I think... I think that I mean uh, indie titles are going to lead the crossplay charge, uh, obviously, and even like that the MOBA, the gigantic game, the MOBA, that's uh, that's that, that game, a game like that with all the different characters and the, the RPG elements is going to be perfect, I think, for crossplay as well. So I mean, I'm I'm interested. I, I really want to see more on that game. That that game actually really really stood out to me. Just something fresh from Microsoft, from a, from a is that first party. Or was that no no? Was that that's like a, a, or was that like a third party kind it's a, of? It's deal? a third party deal, third party yeah. deal, exclusive yeah. deal uh, for Windows 10 PC and Xbox One, releasing later this year. Yeah, and um, so yeah, I mean, you know, to me, that's pretty much uh, pretty much all I got on that for right now. I need to, I need to see a little bit more. Right, Brandon, what are your thoughts on on the uh, the indie movement? Oh, well, you know. Um... I'm I'm always been big in indies, you know. What I mean, I'm a full supporter of that, and and for that reason, this is, uh, it's good for Microsoft. I think uh, what they're doing is actually trying to pull that that Steam guy away from Steam. You know what I mean? He can, <laughs> he, he can play with, you know, what I'm saying his Xbox right. guys. Right. You know what I mean? So I, I think that was a good move by them. You know, they they kind of played their cards right on that, and uh, you know, I think it's important. You know. You bring indies uh, kind of to the forefront. You still have your heavy hitters in your back pocket, but you know that can kind of feed the masses, and mm -hmm. you know it, it feeds both. You know, what I'm saying both uh, parties. So you get the Xbox and you get the PC guys on there. So I think it was a smart move. Yeah, no, I think it's a smart move as well. Um, I think what people don't realize is the simple fact that Microsoft knows what they're doing. You know, people don't realize that Microsoft knows what they're doing. They are developing a Windows 10 with built-in Xbox app and a built-in Steam app. Now, why in the world would they build a Steam app into Windows 10 if they were not going to put it to use? Why would they do that? It only makes sense that they're going to put that to use. And I yeah, think there's bigger plans. There's bigger plans to that. I think they're figuring out somehow to integrate some type of cross play with maybe some Steam games that you can play, um, or maybe 
getting some Steam games to the Xbox One that we normally we wouldn't get because they're PC bound. So um, I, I think that Microsoft is smart in what they're doing. I, I think they look at Sony and they say Sony have this ecosystem that they're trying to build. Um, it's, a, it's a cloud ecosystem. They have PS Now. They have PS TV. Um, they have the View uh, network that they're trying to create with the, the movie, the TV channels and stuff like that. Um, and then you have this integration between PlayStation 4, um, the Vita, um, the, the PS TV and all this stuff like that where you can play games and everything. And they're trying to build this little network uh, through the cloud and also be able to play these old games. And I think Microsoft, maybe they already had this in, in play before Sony, but they're looking at this. And they're like, we own 85, maybe 90% of the operating systems in the world, in the entire world. And we're going to give away Windows 10 to you for free. <laughs> like, it's not, like, is nobody realizing what Microsoft is doing right now? Like, think about that concept, right? If you have every single operating system in the world get an OS update for free, and it's a better, it's a better OS, it's a better operating system, and it comes with an Xbox app, and it comes with Steam already built in, it comes with all of Xbox Live's features, you start playing xbox you're playing xbox yeah you know yeah. like it's, there's a method to the madness man there's a method to the madness they're really about to shut the game down it's not about i'm starting to realize it's not about consoles it's not about the console race it's not about the console race for all the consoles that sony has put out their company had to sell the sony online entertainment division just to get into the black and now that's a true statement because if they didn't sell that company, they were going to be in the red again. But that that gave them just enough money to get into the black. That's why they held back their financials um, for so long. Microsoft announced their financials first. Usually it's Sony who does it first. Um, but they did that. And they, they got into the black because of that sale. I mean, in the process, we get some pretty good games. We'll get H1 and one. Oh, was it H1Z1? Excuse me. The zombie MMO. We'll get. Yeah, H1Z1. Um, yeah, we'll get EverQuest Online. We'll get. Um, We'll get, Hopefully uh, DC. DC Universe. I think they yeah. said that as well. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's gonna be big. big. You know me, I can't wait to play this D, you know, yep. superhero. Big DC guy. Yep. Um, and then uh we're also supposed to get um Planet Side. It's Planet Side 2. So, you know, those games that were going to be exclusives and that was, you know, online only will now be on the Xbox One, which is really, really awesome. I'm excited about that. So you know, that was something that they had to get rid of. People want to downplay it and act like uh, you know, they weren't making money. It was only a detriment. But when you lose four exclusives, no matter what the situation is, that, that speaks volumes. So, I mean, look, the bottom line is, is that Microsoft has something up their sleeve and it's going to be astronomical when all this stuff happens in the fall. Fall is going to be Microsoft's year. Again, people think it's not. I'm yeah, telling you right they're, now. They're playing, they're, put, they're playing all the cards for the fall, man. They, fall and beyond. They are playing a, so. They are playing a blind person. <laughs> that's what they are they are playing a blind they are a blind person and people think oh this person is blind not knowing he's a 10th degree black belt and a master with the katana you know what I'm saying and as soon as you try to touch up on him all his senses is home I mean the reality of it is is that Microsoft has some plans everybody needs to keep watching what's happening and you know Tick Podcast is going to be there firsthand to witness it all and get these guys on the show to talk about it um so you know we heard that Microsoft uh, from GDC as well has some of their studios working on games for HoloLens. So our realities and dreams that we were talking about um, is coming true. Uh, what are your thoughts on that, Unified? I mean, you know, we we spoke about it on our last episode. What do you think they have a development for HoloLens? If you could take a guess, mm, man, I'm hoping Halo. <laughs> Nah, man, you know, that, that is their flagship franchise, so I wonder if they have anything going on with that. But Project Spark is probably something. They're, they might be looking at some integration with that. You know, Brennan, I think Brennan even pointed that out, that that game would make a lot of sense in our last uh, podcast with HoloLens. But as far as, you know, uh, for modding and, and creating uh, stuff on, on Project Spark, I think that would be uh, pretty innovative. So I think that's I think that's a game that's probably at the forefront of their ideas, and then they're also probably working on some exclusive stuff, man. 
Yeah. Um, you know, imagine like a space exploration game. Mm. Like they show, you know, they show with the, the thing with the Mars, right? How you can right, look around on right, Mars. Right. I guarantee you, there's something going on with a game with that. No, I don't, know, I, don't, I don't know if you guys don't remember, but we had, it was a, one of our podcasts way back when, mm. uh, last year, where we had, I pulled up, I found some information where they were working on, uh, we looked at the link profiles, and we found uh-huh. where, where there's some, a couple of the guys were working on, they were former Connect guys, and they were working right. on some kind of new, something with space, something with, you know, and I, I don't know, I believe there's something coming, man. I don't know if E3 will talk about it or not. Uh, just like a very early prototype stage of it with Hololens, I don't know, mm-hmm. but I do think that that that's also something that would really play into the Hololens technology very well. So, yeah, I think so as well. Uh, I don't know what they what they have planned, but I think I got an idea, some stuff. Brandon, what is your thoughts? I think uh, I well I I, I want to see it on uh, like a game like Quantum Break or or like or like Scale Bomb. Yeah, um, something where it's going to be like a ma- massive area, uh, you know, for kind of quantum got, break, got you, a big you got the time uh, release and stuff like that. The graphics on that are, are ridiculous. Um, I remember when they sh- they showed like a trailer for it uh, on quantum break, and uh, you know he was kind of walking through the glass and stuff like that. That would be like so dope, you know. What I mean, I actually do it right in front of your face. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that would be hot. I'm not going to lie. The glass yeah. was shattered in your room. Might freak, right, you, right. Uh, might freak you out a little bit. <laughs> it would freak you out. Well, you know, you yeah. have the glass sitting in space. <laughs> that would be kind of dope. I'm not going to lie. Yeah, you know, to see, you know, stuff like that. I mean, uh, it doesn't have to be anything major, but you know, they're definitely going to be working on something exclusive. It's going to be some, you know, mind blowing when they do unveil it. But I think we might be some, like maybe two years off before we see. Um, yeah. like an actual game where it's actually, you know, fully implemented. Yeah, they might, you know, if they show anything at all, just be like prototype stuff. You right. Know? Yeah. Like they've already kind of shown nothing, nothing yeah. that's actually functional quite yet. Yeah, no, I, I think that they got a few games in the pipeline, but you know what I think would work great with it? Gears. Gears would work uh, so amazing with this game because they're trying to take it back to its roots with the horror. Yeah. You know, like the first game, yeah. Like the first game, you know. Imagine seeing the krill fly around in your room, you know. <laughs> that would be so. That might scar epic. me for life, man. But I'm just saying. Think about that. <laughs> if you were scared. sitting on your couch and you're in an area where there's minimum light and the krill are out, and like if you don't hide, you know, if you don't get in the light, they'll attack you. And like this. <laughs> In your, your, in your living room, and my wife, and like, you're looking at me like I'm crazy. That's what I'm saying. Room, like, you I'm see them, house, right? Like you see them circling in your in your living room while you're playing the game, while circling in your room. And as soon as you run in, they like start to come towards you. That would be, I would freak out. I would lose my mind. Yeah, oh, yeah. I would lose my mind. But that's Don't. the kind of intensity that something like that will bring. I honestly believe that. Augmented reality may shut virtual reality down. I think there's a space for both. I just think that augmented reality is doing what 3D always wanted to do. Right. So, you know, at GDC, they uh, also spoke about DirectX. And we all know DirectX is a touchy subject. Uh, We have Brad Wardell on the show who spoke about DirectX. He gave us some clues about... Um, Xbox One, but mostly he spoke about PC and what he's worked with. Um, He also announced at GDC that he had a new game. There was an article saying that his games look so realistic that the the people who had invested into the game didn't believe it was real. Like, didn't believe that the game was actually running. Like, they thought it was a CG, a CGI game. And you know, hopefully when Brad comes on the show, he can give us video footage of said game so we can see it. I haven't seen it anywhere. I haven't seen it up on any website yet, uh, but I would love to see the game. It would be so awesome if he gave us exclusive footage on that. But um, hopefully we get him back on the show and we can talk about that. But, you know, during the conference, they spoke about DX12. And one of the things they brought up was that when Phil Spencer was talking, he said when they did DX12 conversion of Fable Legends from DX11 to DX12, they saw an increase of 20% from the GPU. And the game went from 900p to 1080p. Now, when the fans heard that, they went crazy. 
Um, even our own ICXM wrote up an article off of that, um, you know, stating that it was for Xbox. We, we come to later find out that it, it didn't really say that was for Xbox, just that it was an increase in GPU. But, you know, uh, I think, in my opinion, I think it is for Xbox. What are your thoughts on that? Seeing Fable move from DX11 to DX12 and actually getting this 20% increase, um, even though it was running on PC, some people think it's for Xbox. What are your thoughts on that, Brandon? Uh, the fact that there's any increase at all, whether it be a, a, on PC or, you know, for the Xbox, you know, the increase is the increase. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? So the, the increase is definitely going to do something. Um, right. You know, 20% of what, you know what I mean? Th- that all depends on the GPU. You know what <laughs> I mean? So depending on what your GPU is, that 20% could be, you know, a lot or that 20% could be a little. Right. You know what I mean? So. Um, but I'll take it either way. I, I think it's uh, it's great. You know what I mean? What mm-hmm. what they've been able to do to optimize, yeah. um, you know, the transition from DirectX 11 to D- DirectX 12 is that's something amazing, man. That's something that you just don't see um, very much. So I'll take it. Yeah, I mean, if that's if that's any indication of what the gains might actually be, just looking at Fable, then it's definitely positive. But the thing is, everybody's playing on these numbers. They're they're just playing and praying on them, basically. And I don't, right. I don't, I think people need to stop looking at the numbers so much and just kind of look at the results. And you know, we'll we'll start to see that stuff. Like he said, they he he showed Fable the increase that it brought with Fable from 900 to 1080. So that was that was a pretty big uh, pretty big deal. I know a lot of mm-hmm. people are gonna be re- are gonna are really excited about that. But the thing is, to take away from it is that I don't think everybody should get their expectations too, too high because right. I, we don't know yet that it's going to do that for every single t- title that comes out. So, right. I mean, we'll have to wait and see. But, hey, it's a step in the right direction. It's a step in the right direction for sure. Um, I want to talk about something that Brad said uh, when we had him on the show. Um, he, he brought up the fact that every game that releases at the end of the year will not be full DX12 games. Yeah. And that one sequence that they showed that GDC proved that what he said was true. Now, when they showed um, Fable Legends at the Windows event, they said that this was going to be a DX12 game, right? But prior to that, it's a DX11 game. And the fact that it's a DX11 game being ported and moving over to DX12 automatically lets us know that it is not a full DX12 game. This is what Brad was saying and he was warning us about that what Phil was saying and a lot of people like to, you know, underplay. He never said that, you know, whatever happens with DX12 hit Xbox One, he never said it would be nothing. He never said it would be next to nil. He never said that it would be insignificant. What he said was that it wouldn't be dramatic. A 20% increase is not dramatic because you're going from 900p to 1080p. Exactly. That's that's exactly. not dramatic. Right. But but it's but the thing about it is is that it's something. Yeah. It's an increase and it's an important increase because now the resolution input is on par where it's supposed to be. Now, yeah. that's all they needed. That's all That's they needed. really right, that's all they needed. And that and understand something. That's GPU bound. We didn't even we're not even talking about CPU bound. That's just GPU, that's just the GPU. That's 20% coming from the GPU. Now, here's the thing. A lot of people felt like he talked about PC um, and that he didn't reference Xbox One. But what you guys have to understand is that it's not about the Xbox One and it's not about the PC. The most important factor of what he said was when we move the game from DX11 to DX12. That is the key. The Xbox One is still going to get a Windows 10 type of OS. And that's what we're waiting for in the fall. When that OS kicks in, the Xbox will be DX12 ready. In a nutshell, what you're saying is that the game that used to be DX11, which probably would have ran on the Xbox One right now, if it came out today, right now, we would get the one that they showed at 900p. That's the game that we would get. But... Come fall, the game will get 
is the one that works on DirectX 12 because the Xbox One will have DirectX 12 and we'll get the one that's 1080p. See, and, and that's the thing that people aren't realizing. People keep talking about the hardware. The hardware doesn't change. Well, the greatest thing about the API is that the hardware and the PCs aren't changing. But look at the significant differences in the things that's happening in these PCs. So it's really not about the hardware. It's just about what it's doing to the hardware. It doesn't matter if the, if the increase is 10%, 5%, or 20%. The, the software, the API is doing something to the hardware to make it more efficient, giving it more power. And, and that's something that PC didn't have. And that's something that the Xbox is struggling with because there's something in it that is not compatible. It's not making it get out all of the power. That's the one thing that they keep talking about. When DirectX come out, it'll make the things that the Xbox so that's supposed to do right make it do it better and i think that's the significant difference in those things and something else they reported on recently was that brad wardell said he saw a 15 percent increase in es ram output when one of the developers was using the pix applicator um, for those of you who doesn't, who do not know what PIX is, P-I-X, you can Google it. Um, P-I-X is a feature, um, I believe in a DX12 program that kind of does the work for you. It, it finds all of the bugs, all of the bottlenecks and all of the problems, um, uh, within the ES RAM. And it pretty much tells you if you do it this way, this is the most efficient way to get use of the ES RAM. Yeah, it's just a guy. Guide yeah, it's, it's, it's just a guide tool, but the guide tool is helping the ES RAM output an additional 15%. That's yeah, significant. That's huge, man. That's huge. That's, that is significant. So you, we're not talking about just the 20% GPU increase. You got a 15% ES RAM increase. We're bound to get a CPU increase. This, this direct X12 is going to do something for Xbox one. We don't know what it is but do know it's going to do something and whether it's significant or not, it doesn't matter because the games already look amazing. What's most important is the performance is the performance on par where it needs to be with some of the PC titles. And I think we'll get that this fall. Um, yeah. So yeah, the, the, the only thing is to remember is a lot of devs, third party devs, namely that are reluctant to even mess with the ES RAM. Which, you know, to me, that's a problem. You need to have more right. people trying to maximize, you know, the development by using the ES RAM and work around it. Maybe with this PIX tool, it'll, it'll make a big difference. Yeah, no, I definitely hope so. Um, you know, it, I think that Microsoft has something special going on. Um, they got really, really big plans. And, you know, be honest with you, it was a really big show. The announcement of Elite Dangerous to me was a surprise but once i started reading up on what it what it's about and what you can do in the game then you turn around and you add this to the xbox platform cross play with the pc platform you literally just added an entire new universe of gamers you literally just opened the floodgates on this game and um i spoke to phil uh sometime last year i don't remember exactly when but i asked him i said phil you know what's a game that's missing on the xbox one a space, a space dogfighting sim type title. I grew up on Super Nintendo playing games like Wing Commander. Oh yeah. You know, Colony Wars on PlayStation. Um, I was really big. Even even Wing Commander on PlayStation. Those old disc games with the giant cat on the front <laughs> with Mark Hamill. <laughs> man, that's going Mark back, Hamill. man, that's going Yeah, back. no, definitely. Um, but still, you know, Wing Commander was one of my favorite games, and I love I love games like that, flight simulation in space was amazing and I told him that and he brought up an old game I don't remember the name of the title that came out on the Xbox um I can't remember the name of the game but he brought up an old title and said you know that was something that they had that was really cool um and I said yeah well maybe you guys should think about bringing that back and a year later he pops up with Elite Dangerous now I don't know if this is supposed to compete with No Man's Sky he said he would make up for it um, people are telling me that No Man's Sky is um, a timed exclusive. I, I still haven't gotten any word on that. But 
Do you guys think that Elite Dangerous is to make up for Xbox One not getting No Man's Sky? Mm-hmm. Mike? Let's, I mean, yeah, yeah. But in a way, let's hope not. Exactly. I mean, Elite Dangerous, those look awesome. I, mm-hmm. I, the little bit I know about that title, because, you know, they just sort of announced it. Um, and I didn't really wasn't too sure on the PC roots of that game. But um, it is a sim, you know, what you told me about it. So I'm all about sims, space sims. So right. <laughs> that's got my interest right there. But in, right. in my opinion, let's hope not exactly when compared to No Man's Sky, because I really want to see No Man's on Xbox One. And I think it actually will happen. I think that's just a timed exclusive myself, right. but um, I'm excited about Elite Dangerous though, and I, it, so you know, is it a makeup? Maybe it is. I mean, and Phil Phil's the one that really knows whether it is or it isn't, but um, it might be. Brandon, I think they have to put so much into No Man's Sky that it probably is an exclusive for a PlayStation. I think. Uh, mm. Those guys over there, um, you know, big fans of like their Joe Danger games and things like that. Yeah. This this is definitely on another scale for them, um, right. with with No Man's Sky, and I think uh, what they have to put into it is probably going to be too much for them to try to port the game over. Um, right. Even though you know it's it's supposed to be you know pretty quick to to port the games over with uh, Windows 10, mm-hmm. um, but as as far as this being replacement, I think um, this is actually a different type of game, and I think it's. Uh, it actually probably would attract more players to it. Um, no Man's Sky looks, you know, it looks gorgeous with all the colors and things like that. Um, but I think yeah. actually showing battles with Elite Dangerous will will get you more people being interested in that than rather than just like, oh, let me, you know, explore all these random planets and right. not yeah, really and know what's you going know, on. Pet, pet an alien dinosaur or something. Yeah. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> that, that excited me. That, that excited me about that game. I th- yeah, I mean, I, I think that the the exploration aspect of, um, you know, No Man's Sky is what really captured everybody. I think seeing this little title where you can get in the ship, fly out of, you know, fly up into the sky, hit the atmosphere, go into outer space is what captivated people. Yeah, just a procedurally generated world, man. That's right. the idea of it. It's kind of cool. Yeah, I think that's what it is. But, you know, you turn around. I you know I'm reading up on Elite Dangerous and they're saying that you know if enough people do you know join a faction and you do missions for a faction and enough people do that a civil war could break out in the game and you'll get the news over the I believe um, the way the story is told is through um, news comms and it's not like some little you know type like chatter it's like a real full-blown news conversation information that you're getting and and literally it can lead to the prices of certain worlds going up you know you might have went to one planet one day and got some parts for your ship at you know 500 you know dollars or whatever whatever the currency is in the game and then go back the next week and it's one million all because of a civil war broke out in the region that's amazing. That is an amazing is, concept. <clears throat> Wood, the question, is this game purely in cockpit kind of view, or is there is there actually on foot stuff or what? Now, now that's the thing. It is a cockpit game. And, okay. and, and I think that's one of the things that that's where No Man's Sky really kind of takes the cake. The being able to go yeah. into a planet um, and get out of the cockpit and explore the landscape. We don't know how big the worlds are, like where you're landing or if you can travel by foot, you know, whatever. But, um, you know, but for the most part, yeah, that's pretty much what it is in a nutshell. Um, you can't get out of the cockpit. But the greatest thing about the game is the, the dog fighting, the spaceship battles, um, getting into battles with, battle, you know, star stations, like starships and stuff like that. Oh, yeah. That sounds epic. Yeah, no, it definitely does. And then, Thinking about building your ship, customizing your ship. You, I'm all about customization. As an RPG player, I'm all about customization. Making something my own with my own style and my own colors and my own weapons and things like that in a game and the type of ships that I want. Oh, that's just that's just amazing to me. Um, I just really hope that the game lives up to what it is. And what he said was it will be a complete port to the Xbox One. Yeah. So. 
If he's saying it's going to be a complete port, this game obviously is coming out later in the year. This game will probably be a DX12 port. Yeah. It'll probably be another game that's DX12 port, and we'll get mm-hmm. the exact game with the exact graphics and probably the exact res and exact frame rate. And I can see that happen. So, um, no, it, I think it's really interesting what they what they have. Uh, it's pretty pretty awesome. So, um, you know, before we get out of here, I want to touch on this last game that really impressed me, um, Gigantic. I thought Gigantic was a really, really cool looking game. It was really awesome. Um, Basically what it is, in a nutshell, for those of you who don't know or don't get it, basically what it is, is you play, there there are, I believe it's four characters or five characters on one side and four or five characters on the other side. And you you go to battle with each other, but the point of the game is to defeat the the enemy's god, um, the god that they worship. Um, so think of it like evolve, but instead of you you know trying to hunt down this beast, is four versus one, but you're going against this giant demigod or this god that you have to destroy. But in the process, the demigod has his own minions trying to protect it. And that's really what it is. They're trying to destroy your god, you're trying to destroy their god, and you're basically battling each other in some type of shooter-esque game with all these amazing looking colors and, um, you know, animal looking creatures it's very very interesting title and it's coming exclusively to windows 10 and xbox one with crossplay um what do you guys think about this game do you think yeah, that was think... A, a good pickup uh what yeah. are your thoughts mike i think it's i think it was uh a good thing to, to bring a moba into the console space and you know give console players a little more exposure of a moba besides smite you know we, we had smite drop recently or whatever but right um yeah, I mean, and I kind of touched on this game a little bit earlier too, just from the trailer, from from vaguely what we could see with the game, uh, how it looks, how it's going to turn out. It definitely, it's a very vibrant, colorful looking game. Definitely, uh, it's going to bring a lot of RPG elements, which I love in, in games in general. Any game that has a lot of RPG elements, so I'm interested to see how that's going to work and how it's going to play out with the whole uh, you know demigod thing to battling each other. Right. Both ends and the crossplay functionality. I think, like I, I really do think that Gigantic is actually going to be a, a game that's going to offer a lot in terms of crossplay across all, maybe all three devices. Uh, you know, your your phone, uh, your PC, and your um, and your Xbox. Right. I think I think they. I mean, really, I think they could even add phone functionality of some sort, like a top down view or something like that. I don't know, but but PC to Xbox, it'll be it'll be nice. Tablet would be nice. Yeah, a tablet. Should that, definitely tablet tablets. Yeah. yeah, tablet. That tablet, tablet would, would work. Yeah, yeah. That's the type of game that you could be sitting on your couch or at the dinner table or something while your kids are watching TV and your wife is in the kitchen cooking. You could be on your tablet playing a quick, uh, playing a, uh, a quick game of gigantic. Hey, no disrespect to the women. You know, I know I said the kitchen thing. <laughs> I didn't. <laughs> I didn't mean it in that way. You know, but. I'm just saying that's usually what wives do for their husbands, you know. Yeah, cool, girl. Get that kitchen, get that kitchen and cook. Get in that kitchen and cook, girl. Yeah, I don't, I don't want no Gamergate issues. You know what I'm saying with two podcasts. No, man, stuff. nah, we we know you didn't mean that, man. Yeah, yeah, no, but yeah, but you know that's just one of those things. I I, I look at it from that perspective. My kid is always watching Thomas the Train Engine. He loves Thomas the Train Engine, and um, you know, right now. I just moved back to New York, so, you know, I'm still looking for a place, and I have the one TV in my room, so it's not like I have a, a bunch of things besides my laptops for him to watch on, so it would be awesome if I could play, you know, Sunset Overdrive on my laptop or a tablet or something like that, so I'm looking forward to these features. A lot of people didn't get why Xbox would, you know, stream their games to the PC. That makes no sense. They should just put the games on PC. No, it makes sense for the people who don't have a bunch of televisions all over the house or they have large families and each TV is taken up. Yeah. I I think Gigantic has the most potential for the crossplay. I really do. I don't know. I don't know why, but I'm just I'm ready to I'm ready to hear about more features about that game. Yeah, definitely. I I'm definitely looking forward to it. The game should be very exciting um and it should be very fun. Uh so it, it should be dope. Um I heard they're going to be at PAX. So you guys know I'm heading to PAX East representing Tick Podcast. I uh, will be making the rounds, talking to everybody I can possibly talk to, including the infamous Major Nelson. I'm going to try to have a conversation with him and convince him to come on the show. 
uh you know i'm definitely going to okay. reach out to as many developers triple a developers i'm working really hard to try to get some japanese developers on the show hopefully they speak great english <laughs> and we don't need uh you know hey man a, well they um, can get a they can maybe have a translator so that's what i was gonna we'll say we don't we don't have to get a translator that will be a very long show uh be honest with you if we said a question and then the translator translated and then we had to wait from the shron and then the translator translated back yeah that would that would take we, we need to get hideo kojima man we need to get hideo <laughs> and we need to get <laughs> kamaya <laughs> On yeah, that would be epic, man. Right, yeah, Maya's gonna block his dog. He ain't coming. <laughs> <laughs> He's gonna block his dog. Reach out to Kamaya. Kamaya, would you like to come on block? What? Yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. I don't I just sang if he I don't like even say anything. Yeah, no. Yeah, no. No, Kamaya doesn't play, man. He's the block master. And um Kojima, yeah, we definitely gotta get him on the show because I just wanna ask him why the heck was uh Metal Gear seven twenty P on Xbox and Assassin's Creed is nine hundred P on Xbox. <laughs> you know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. This doesn't make sense to me when you have a game that's actually has a bigger open world and more stuff going on and you drop this small title and it's only seven twenty P. I'm thinking I'm of a I'm saying. thinking of a four letter word, man. Lazy. <laughs> I don't want to go that far. I don't know. But, uh, but it might be. It might be. I just think the Japanese developers don't get the Xbox. Yeah. That's how I feel. I feel like they just don't yeah. get it. Or they or their or their development kits. Or not not development kits, I'm sorry. Their engines, the engines that they build their games on isn't um isn't next gen ready. Put it like that. Um and being that the PlayStation 4 is easier to develop for, it's easier to make games to get it to 1080p on that because a lot of these these Japanese games have been really sorry, really sorry. Um, yeah. And not in the way where the games are bad, just in the way that the performance has not been up to par compared to some of the Western titles that actually have been up to par. So, you know, we'll see. That's that's for another show. Yeah. Uh, we, we can reflect on that. Yeah, yeah it's kind of amazing because Japan used to lead that charge. So it's just no, no. it's like the tables have turned. No, it definitely has. Over the years, the, the, the Western developers have really taken reign as some of the top developers. A lot of people hate them, uh, the Western developers, EA and Activision and Ubisoft, but these are the people that dominate the space of games. Yeah, they're, they're, the driving, are, they're driving the industry now. So, they yeah. are. Them, 2K, um, the, all the smaller studios that we love, BioWare, Bethesda, um, Rockstar. Rockstar, all these companies are owned by these major Western companies. And um, even though we hate them, they do make the best games that we love. Um, and the Japanese uh, developers are looking more in the mobile space. They really are. They're looking in the mobile space. So um, you're just not getting the games that we used to get. Though I do look forward to Final Fantasy 15 because it looks absolutely stunning. Absolutely stunning. I might not do a podcast for three months. If you, if you don't see us on, it's because I'm playing Final Fantasy 15. <laughs> I mean, it really looks that great. Um, just amazing. Um, but still, yeah. So, you know, that's the end of our show. Uh, we will be talking about PAX when I get back over this weekend. I'm, I'm going to see if I can get Kiss Move to come on the show because we'll be there together. We'll have a lot to discuss. And it would be great to have a guest on. We haven't had a normal yeah. guest on in a long time. Um, we have him on the show. We'll get to talk in a little bit. Uh, definitely stay out. Look out for uh, Anchorman V and myself's new podcast, uh, which is a joint podcast. Uh, called Multiverse, where we talk about anime and superheroes. The first episode is on his channel. Uh, so definitely check that out. Uh, we have more in store for that. We got some really great feedback, and we would love to hear more feedback from you guys. So check it out. Tell us what you think. And, um, you know, he does giveaways and things like that. So it's going to be a really, really interesting show. Uh, the first episode, we talked a lot about some of the TV shows and some of the movies, superhero movies that's coming out, including who would win between Daredevil, who would win between Daredevil and Green Arrow. Um, so you got to listen to that. <laughs> you got to listen to the show to find out, you know, uh, who I thought won and who he thought won. And you guys can make up your mind on that. So that's that's definitely a great show. Um, we will have War Horse Studios and Heart Machine Studios on next week, Thursday and Friday. Both of those will release on Saturday. Uh, well, at least I'll try to get them released on Saturday. Um, if you don't know who these guys are, 
Heart Machine is the developers of the awesome 16-bit game um, Hyper Light Drifter. It's an RPG, something that I've been looking forward to for a very long time. We'll have them on the show um, talking about their new title um, on the red carpet, as well as the guys who make Kingdom Come. That's who War Horse Studios is. The Kingdom Come Deliverance um, is a new medieval game that doesn't have a play on fantasy, just more realistic, down-to-earth medieval knights in armor, swords, spears, mace, you know, hardcore RPG elements. Looking forward to this title, so we'll have them on the show as well. Um, and, you know, stay tuned. We, we always have a lot more in store for you. You guys have any final words before we head out? Yeah. Have you guys taken a look at the new Unreal? Unreal game? Oh, man. Let me tell you something. That's something that I missed. Unreal Tournament looked absolutely amazing. Man, the environments blew me away. Oh, my God. Man, yeah. At the speed that the game was going, yep. the speed, it reminded me so much of the old school Unreal Tournament. I've never been so hyped for an Unreal Tournament since Dreamcast. Did you guys <laughs> catch that they were using DirectX 12? Yes. That game will be on Xbox One. So you know that game is coming to Xbox One. It's coming it's, to Xbox One. I know, man. One. I know. You guys, <laughs> we know that's coming. It's the first time that I've ever been interested in PCs. As soon as I see a game on PC, all I want to know is, is it made with Xbox uh, DX12? Is it made from <laughs> DX12? Because <laughs> I want that game ported to Xbox One. I now have a reason to be interested in PC games. I honestly do. Yeah. I never did before, but when you think about it, you now have a reason <laughs> to be interested in PC games because of the portability of DX12 to Xbox One. They ported Shovel Knight to Xbox One in one day. Yeah. One it's huge day. That's yeah, what I'm I mean, that's about. yeah. That's, that's just that's very just encouraging. I gotta oh, pose a, pose a question to you guys. Go what ahead. do you what do you think is gonna happen to Smart Glass once uh, Windows 10 and, and DX12 comes out? How how do you think that's gonna evolve? Mm. Oh, it's gonna evolve with the crossplay. I think. I mean, I. That functionality is gonna come in. I just, I just, I'm interested to see how they're gonna, how they're gonna utilize it though. You know what? I think that smart glass might disappear and just get be taken over by the Xbox app. It just makes yeah. sense. Yeah, no, yeah, that it does. It Kinda. just makes sense. Yeah. It, the Xbox hat, the Xbox app, and the smart glass app literally have the same functions. The only difference is on the Xbox app you can play games. Yeah, yeah. it'll be time to subjugate. <laughs> yeah, it'd be time. It does. It makes no sense to have Smart Glass and that at the same time. Um, though the Smart Glass app is used, can be used as a remote control to control the Xbox as well. I do it on occasion sometimes when yeah, I don't feel like yeah, getting yeah. control. Hey, it'll probably just take the best aspects of Smart Glass and put them in the app. Yeah, and then it'll just be that. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Um, but yeah, I think that's that's that that is what probably will happen. Uh, it'll probably get gobbled up by the Xbox app. I see no reason to have all these apps. Multiple available. apps, no. Right, for it's Xbox confusing. One when they literally have all the same functions and stuff. So, um, oh, that's an interesting question, though. It definitely yeah. is an interesting question, something that we can talk about on our next episode. Um, yeah, I was so. going to say everybody stay uh, stay locked in to ICXM.net for all things Xbox and Microsoft. Yes, definitely stay locked into ICXM. Um, we don't really get a chance to talk about it. We have a home website, icxm.net. Please go check it out. Please go to the forums and talk. We are really trying to build the ultimate site for you guys. Um, you guys have opinions on what we can do with the website. What would you like to see on the website? How we can make the website better? Leave yeah. us questions. Leave us questions on Twitter. Leave us questions in, on the YouTube channel. Um, we are really trying to make it the best site possible, and we're working really hard to really make our forums similar to reddit or similar yes. to neogaf where we can have developers come and talk to you guys mm -hmm. you know and you can ask them the questions yourselves and stuff like that and they'll respond to you so we're working diligently to do these things tick podcast so we're working hard for the fans um so definitely check out icxm.net support us sign up get in those forms talk we'll be doing giveaways soon on that as well um for yeah. the website and so be transitioning polls and poll topics over to the forums as well Yep. And um, I'm planning actually to do a giveaway to the person who gives us the most comments in our news articles. So that's something to look out for. I'll announce that probably within the next week um, oh, okay. as I work with a few connections. <laughs> so, um, yeah, but definitely stay tuned to that. So I want to thank you guys for listening. Uh, we really appreciate all your support, all your help as usual. 
Uh, we love you guys. We, we, we really, truly, truly do. And stay tuned to our next episode and my next pod shot as I'll be reflecting on PAX East and talking about all the exciting things that happened there and all the new connections that Tick Podcast has, has made for the fans. And thank you to all the fans who tuned in this week to our GDC edition. I'm your host, KORX Kellel. Peace. For the fans, by the fans.